that's all the time we have. We've got through two episodes. My God. I know. Thank you, Flapjack, for being my co-host this year. You weren't that much of a bitch. Good for you. <laughs> I think my ratings were just the bitchiness. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I Before love I being the nice one. I love being the nice one. <laughs> No problem. I'm I'm happy to be the meme one for you, Heather. Anyway. <laughs> do you want a kiki? Do, do, do you want a kiki? Do, do, do you want a kiki? Do you want a kiki? Cult on a kiki. Cult on a kiki. Cult on a kiki. One, two, three. Cult on a kiki. Cult on a kiki. Cult. Okay, that's enough. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's us. We're back for Cult Wanna Kiki. And I've got my special guest co-host, Flapjack. Woo! That horse. I'm so excited to see you here, Flapjack. How you been doing down south? Honestly, I have been doing really, really well. This has been a busy year, but a great year. Um, earlier in the year, I got to open for Chapel Roan, which was an amazing experience. Right? What? It really popped off. And no way. Ever since then, it has just been a, a, a wonderful up. Um, uphill for me. Uphill. Is that the right word? Everything's been great. No. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't I do not do very much physical activity myself, so I'm not sure if there's a difference between up and downhill. <laughs> well, hey, I, I also don't do a whole lot of physical activity, but I did recently start doing a Zumba class because... What? I, yeah, I did a musical in the summer. I got to play Brad Majors in the rock. Yes! Class. And it was like, not just the shadow cast. Like I got to sing on stage and everything. It was really fun. Uh, but I wanted to like trim down a little bit, maybe uh, work off some of that uh, weight that I had gained from stress eating after being on Camp Wanakiki. So um, yeah, I've, I've lost nearly 40 pounds this year. Uh, wow. For, and now my costumes don't fit anymore. So I guess See? I'm oh my now. God. Well, if you lost them, I found them. Don't worry, girl. <laughs> Um, what are those bananas you've been eating, Candy Kong? Exactly. Yes, we're in our jungle-themed looks. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes. And, and, okay. and we should probably get on with it because we are doing two episodes of Camp Wan uh, Wanakiki. We're doing episode seven, the jungle episode, and episode eight, the spooky stories episode. So we have a lot to get through. We, we um, do. Fifteen looks. Let's hit it, Toots. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. So let's get into the first episode. Episode seven. It's the survivor badge. Surprise. All the hikers return to do some crazy ass fetch quests. I don't know if you play video games, but it's, it's just like, it's like, go get a banana and bring it back to me. <laughs> and, and then it's like very Indiana Jones with riddles. What did you think of this whole thing? I loved it. The fact that there was an episode that was uh, two things. One, it was so like story driven and story focused. To me, now I might be biased, but I think the best episode of Camp Wanakiki of all time is episode one of season four. And I, because mm. I just love how the characters are introduced, you know, all, right. each of us were showcased in a very specific way that fits the challenge. And I felt the same thing happened at the Survivor Badge. And we never get this chance to see a whole episode dedicated just to the hikers. And I really love that opportunity for them. I did too. I thought it was so good. I was really jealous that all the campers got the whole day off though. Oh, because yeah. <laughs> I think at best on the day that you guys got your chance to return on our season, we got like an hour off for breakfast. Oh yeah. Like, I I think we, we recorded like some promo for the episode and then they were like, okay, campers, wake up. We want these folks to throw paintballs at you. Like we got an extra hour for breakfast. We were like, okay, great. And then we all threw paintballs at each other. That was fun. Um, I really loved this challenge. It was so stupid. And like you said, it reminded me a lot of our improv uh, yeah. capture the flag uh, game that we had. I And I had so much fun with that. I'm curious, which of the pairs was the biggest standout for you? Um, I think honestly, it was uh, Ripham and uh, who was Ripham? No, Ripham and Martina. It was um, Ripham and Martina were pretty good. Everyone was saying Amber and Unique was the standout, but I thought it was the third team. It was um, Hannah and Ivana. Hannah and Ivana. Yeah. I thought they were the standout. I thought they had the most authentic, funny lines. For yeah. Me. I I really enjoyed Hannah and Ivana as well, but I will say Amber and Unique kind of stole the show for me, especially with Amber's thing about being that she couldn't read. You know, that is very relatable for me. Public education <laughs> fucked me over. And so, but then all of a sudden when she just learned to read, I guess through osmosis, um, yeah. that was an impressive feat. 
I was very happy for all of them. I thought they all did a really good job. Um, but ultimately, it didn't count at all going forward to the talent show, as is often the case in Camp Juan and Kiki. And we find out that when they're going to do their talent show, which is Welcome to the Jungle, that trauma alert, the campers are going to be judging the hikers. <gasps> And wow. Amber Vanderbilt gives the face crack of the season, just like her mother would approve of. You know, I think uh, the Nepo baby storyline, you know, Amber really lived up to that in this episode. <laughs> what would you think if uh, I, ha I, I had to judge your drag? Would you, would you uh, be a little worried? <laughs> <laughs> the thing that, on season four, I was so delusional about uh, all of my looks, especially the the two headed alien look, I was like, "There's nothing, there's nothing that could be better than this." And then um, watching it back, seeing that that one head just would not stay erect, I was very sad about it. So it was um, still killer, babe. Like your looks were great. Don't don't just hate yourself that hard. <laughs> no, no. It, on, the merch from that look is probably my favorite merch that I that I've had so far. I think. Really? Mm -hmm, I I do think that I would be. I, I don't know. I think I probably would feel along the same lines as Amber um, right. did. And I, I think a few of the other campers were not super super happy about it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, it always comes down to the talent show, right? So it's not Often. like your, your chance is over or like this is really all that inconsistent with what happens before. For me, yeah. what I'd be concerned is, are they going to choose someone based on who they feel is the best of the best, who's the best of the hikers who maybe shouldn't have been eliminated when they did, or are they gonna choose someone who maybe should have taken a hike early on uh, that's gonna be easy competition to get out? Oh and then God. also, if I did get chosen, would I be in my head the whole time thinking, was I the, the easy, obvious pick? Uh, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of mental gymnastics you have to jump through on that one. There's a lot of ways to get in your head on Camp One Kiki, even though you think it's just, we're a bunch of idiots going Whoo, doo, 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 the whole time where we actually are real people with real emotions. So I get it. And why would you be in your head when you could just give head? Right? I mean, so much easier just to do that. Uh, <laughs> That's how I do uh, it. system on season six. The campers <laughs> do get to judge and we have 10 looks to go through. So let's do a lightning round. <laughs> Let's start with the uh, the campers looks, the campers. and I'm going to start with Patty Beret in this eleganza tiger lady eleganza. I I mean it's gorgeous. It fits her so well. The idea behind it, brilliant. X is on the eyes. You know I love that. This is five out of five minutes for me. It is also five out of five for me. This is exactly the kind of drag that I really love to see. Polished, conceptual, um, bonus points for that boa of the ju jungle creatures. So crazy. Uh, next we have Nutella Fitzgerald as the cockatoo realtor. Uh, this brought me back to an old kids TV show that is like 80s called Zoobly Zoo, where they all dressed up as animals and they were like, bah! I <laughs> thought it was so ridiculous. I don't know what this, what the real estate is like in the jungle. I imagine it's expensive, uh, maybe cheaper than Toronto. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think I give this a four amps of camp. <laughs> It's about the same for me. This was some cockamamie bullshit, but uh, <laughs> I think she's probably selling the birdhouses from season five. Um, <laughs> so for me, it's gonna be, I, I think four amps out of camp as well. Next we have Lulu Crystals as like, what I can only define as a cobra crossed with Dora the Explorer. Yes. Uh, oh, but it's a trouser snake because she also had this giant curtain props that was kind of shaped like trousers kind of <laughs> i see i wish that we had seen a little bit more of that uh trouser tent thing um <laughs> because i didn't i didn't fully understand how it like tied together but also i know we were going through yeah. a lot of looks really fast yeah um, but i loved the concept of this and this is probably my favorite lulu look so far uh which might change come episode eight but yeah. it's Five amps out of camp for me. I mean, that headpiece is really something. 
Yeah, I think it's really cool. Again, I think it's a little bit confusing, so I give it a four. Four amps of camp. Now we've got Stevie Phoenix coming out as the construction worker. And then his he transforms into a full body tractor look with his hands with the plow. Paying um, homage to his Nepo child. This brought me back straight to Clinica. <laughs> Yeah. Trauma, but this is also a five out of five amps. I love the message of just like clearing out the jungle, like so nonchalantly, like camp, camp, camp. This is where I think I may be controversial. I was not really living for this one. Uh, yeah, it was. I didn't like how small the animals were on it, and I couldn't really right. get the whole concept like from far away. I also, I, this is just a weird pet peeve of mine. I hate when we see such pedestrian clothes that don't right. really have things added. And I know we're going for a construction worker, but I think there's ways we could amp that up. So this was a three out of five for me. Yeah. Okay. So we got the hike, the campers done. Let's move on to the hikers. And this is where it counts because these are the ones in the competition. Let's start with Amber Vanderbilt. Oh, poor baby Amber. I really like this concept. I just think she needed to distress the garment, throw it in the mud, Roll around in some leaves, smudge up your hair, like really. I understand she's going for like pretty uh, attacked, but I, I think she it could have gone further. So like I give this a uh, three answer. Yeah, we have seen this kind of concept before where someone's been attacked by animals. I think of Tara Newhall's bird look from season five. Um, and this this is really just lacking for me on a lot of different levels. I will say I felt that her performance was the best that we have seen of her talent show performance. Yes. Really, you could see that hunger in her eyes to want to return to the competition. But I don't really think this translates as, or this is not as strong as it could be. It's a two. Ooh, yeah, no, I feel ya. Um, we've got Unique New York as the Lioness uh, Concierge Bellhop. I think this is way out of left field. I, I don't understand where the hell this is coming from. I do think the garment is pretty and she's a lion. And that's as far as I get uh, with it. Otherwise, it's a little confusing to me. Um, I'd be lying if I said I understood this look. Yeah, uh, but I still think it's pretty. She did a good job. It does meet the jungle thing, so I give it a four. Four and six is unique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, for me, I it, it felt like we kind of just went into a randomizer and got two words and put them together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle, Flappy. <laughs> I know we, it, it's a it's a wild place out there. Um, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed the luggage. I think she may have like gotten luggage from other campers and like oh, hundred percent. That was literally like so everyone's long. luggage. <laughs> <laughs> so I would not really rely on this bellhop, um, nor would I tip her, which is why I'm giving her three ants at a camp, yeah. <laughs> which is still good, still three, not bad. What um, if she was like, a bunny bellhop? Because then like the hops make sense. Right? Not bad. I think you're onto something. Um, that or my wings next up, we have something I think that is phenomenal. Hannah Barbera yes. coming out as Frog Mario. Hey, I know what you're thinking. I mean, uh, frog, I mean, but I hardly know her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just love this. I just love this. I mean, like, I've been thinking about doing a Frog Mario look forever. It fits the jungle theme very much. And then the reveal with the guts. Wow. Like, five amps. Five amps. So, so, so good. Yeah, this was five amps out of camp for me as well. And something I really want to commend her on, I I find it hard to make a look look really elevated without going for, like, I'm in a ball gown and I'm a waitress, you know? But she... <laughs> She made this something where you could probably wear this at a bar, but it's all it also is really conceptual and um yeah. like so campy. Also, you don't really see a lot of hoods in in drag right now that yeah. are used as well as this is. So uh, it's five amps out of camp for me as well. So gorgeous. Next we have Martina, and she is the jungle lady. I mean, I think this is really pretty. I think it's it's you know, gorgeous and very showgirl. Um, I don't think it's um, overly creative or interesting. Like it doesn't have a good spin or tilt for me, which I think is very important in Camp Wanakiki. 
Um, so the best I can give this is a three. Yeah, I kind of agree. She did mention that she, it was a nod to her husband who is from Peru. And I think you and I have both yeah. met her husband who is extraordinarily hot. My God. Hot I, husband alert. I, I mean, I sh we should take points away just for that. <laughs> I know, right? How dare you have a sexy husband? <laughs> um, and so while I appreciate that message behind it, uh, this this is not at the level I would like to see on the Camp Wanakiki main stage. So it's it's too amps out of camp. Ooh, yes. Um... Moving on, we've got Ivana Pisa as a as a cow, jungle cow. I didn't know cows came in jungles. I, apparently, they're called gowers. But also, the tilt being yeah. the Mary Tyler Moore show, I thought was brilliant. Hey, and that's maybe, all this needed. It was maybe, so good. I give this five amps of camp. Maybe when they have the hundredth episode, instead of calling you a cow, they'll call Ivana a cow. Um, Let's not go back there towards to where I was called a cow. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I I have to say, I really was impressed by this look for Ivana. Um, something that I've wanted to see from her in previous episodes is just a little bit more editing because she has these huge grand ideas and yeah. I want to see the finesse there. And for me, the finesse was really well Very. done. Uh, this is a five amps out of camp. I, I loved everything about it. I would tip the shit out of her if she was. Love it. You know, and finally, we have Rip um, as uh, doing a little homage to Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. And I thought this was really cute, really Rip um. um Yes, I think it could have gone a little bit bigger or like had a reveal to amp sure. this up. I like the trimming the bush reference. I love the pot on the head. So many small details um, that I still am going to give this four amps of camp. Um, but I wish it, uh, yeah, it could have gone further. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I don't know if it's been said, but you know, it, Rip has brought, br Rip brought the smallest amount of luggage with them um, yeah. to Camp Wanakiki. And for them to do as well as they did with as little as they did, I think it's such a, it shows how strong of a performer they are. Well, I mean, I guess no other Canadians did just as better, or even more. <laughs> With just his little luggage, but that's okay. <laughs> I was gonna say it's not a competition, but it, it kind of <laughs> it kind of is between me and them. So what do you, what do you give this one? Uh, I I give this a four amps out of camp. One other thing that I wanted to say: it's rare that you see someone with this many details that are really strong on a look at Camp Wanakiki. The more you zoom in, right. there's more to see. Like all of those teeth were individually done. I think it's yeah. really impressive. So I do agree. It, it, there should have been a reveal, but I. I I felt like it needed that honorable mention. Those details are really impressive to me. Exactly. Oh. All right. Well, that brings us to the winner of the episode. The campers unanimously decide that Hannah Barbera will be returning to the competition. Congratulations, yes. Hannah. I think Hannah, yes, gone too soon. They have such a crazy mind. We want to see what the hell's inside of it, don't we? Yes. I was so glad to see her come back. Uh, I you know, and as someone who got to be a PA there, I, I just want to mention, like, the last thing that I said on when I got eliminated was, if you are as talented as you think you are, you can afford to be nice, too, and niceness counts. And for Hannah, she is as talented as she is kind, which is yeah. off the charts levels of talent and kindness. And so I was really excited to see her come back. Also, if you go and watch all of the hiker looks, she really went out of her way to continue amping up her camp, even when she could have been sleeping in. You know, she was in that craft room every single day, making extra props, thinking, how can I amp this up even more? So I thought if there was no one who deserved it more than Hannah, in my opinion. And also just throughout the whole season, she's been putting out her looks day after day, like really trying to use the platform. You know, that's what a superstar does, so. Yeah. Take note. Um, now, uh, the, some of the campers were very angry, and I think it bears to be said, Amber, I think, got really, really angry at this episode. Um, and I hope that Amber is okay. I just want to make sure that she knows that she is loved by the whole Camp Wanakiki community. And even though you had a massive face crack on television, just put on a t-shirt, girl, because... Please! Why not? Exactly. Monetize it. <laughs> Listen, if there is ever something that happens where you are made the butt of a joke, at least make money off of it, okay? Put it on a t-shirt, merch. The Hillary ass, I'm the cow t-shirts are coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you should no. do some sort of like sex toy for that. Like get milked by the Hillary ass cow. <laughs> I don't know if I have that much effort inside for me. I'm, this old cow's gotta go to pasture one day. Um, so let's move on. We have a whole other episode to do. We are into episode eight. And uh, it is a murder mystery for the camp spirit badge. What a crazy thing. All of the ca campers got told that they have to do a murder mystery and show up as a random character. They all put together apparently totally random characters overnight. It was so fun. And they you have to watch it. it, it like we can't even describe it, but all of them came up as these clue-like characters. Patty was Lady Dame Cock and Balls. Stevie as Old Man Hornsby. Lulu came as Puddin' Pop Sugar Cooker. Yeah. Also, uh, is that a meth reference? I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But I mean, come on, Miss Texas references. The only thing that was missing for me was somebody coming as Hillary Ass's ambulance. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Hannah was Bebop, Unique's inflatable sex doll. <laughs> When we got there that morning, like, I remember looking through, like, okay, all the characters, like, these, these these are all really cool. They make sense. And then who comes over that hill other than Hanna-Barbera with Bebop in arm, fully As green? <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, we would not have had this moment if anyone else had been brought back to the competition. So thank so God good. barbera It so good. And Nutella, of course. We always love a French person. We do. Ooh, so French. Very horny French person. She sounded like she had a baguette or a penis in her mouth the whole time. <laughs> Everyone was so funny. And we have to also mention who should appear, but the maids handing out little s'more hors d'oeuvres, Girl oh, Haggard and Flapjack. Yes. And they weren't just any hors d'oeuvres. They were s'more d'oeuvres. S'more d'oeuvres. <laughs> yes. So we got invited back to do community service. Now, a little bit of behind the scenes tea. We yeah. did actually ask to be in episode seven. So Girl and I presented this like mini script outline that we had to the sugar bakers. And we were like, what if just for a few seconds in the first, in the uh, survivor episode, we're the ones who were teaching that class at the beginning about how to survive your hike. So it's right. things like don't mix up poison ivy with toilet paper, how to get, get your hair redone in the woods, things like that. Uh, but they told us no, and I think we pouted enough for the next 24 hours for them to let us come do community service during the fundraiser. Uh, Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been a long time since we've had a Camp Wanakiki cameo, so I'm glad that you made it happen. <laughs> Me too. And uh, it was, uh, what a cool challenge to get to do it on, the murder mystery. And I, I hope that's something that um, as future Camp Wanakiki seasons come, fingers crossed, uh, that we see more stuff like this. Because it really showed the talent um, that these campers have. Like the whole season is like a long form improv challenge, but to have yeah. this kind of short form, it, it, it really mixed things up. And at my viewing party, I've never seen people more attentive to the screen than they were in this episode. And they might even want to consider using some of this in the judging of the episode. Like, how good are they at improv? Yes. Rather than like, you know, some people have been complaining that this has been a very runway heavy season mm -hmm. where like the only thing that matters are the looks. And even on our season, there was a couple times when, you know, the stand up comedy challenge, the look didn't matter. Right. So. Right. Or, or, uh, or the puppet challenge, you know, that that came into play. Um, so I, I appreciate it. Anytime there is something that we can judge a drag performer based on their ability to do something that's relevant to drag, I think we yeah. should do that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I thought it was just gorgeous. Uh, and we get into, of course, their camp spirit stories. Now, now, let's start with Lulu as the head cheerleader in this gorgeous look. What did you think of her look and story? I, I was, was obsessed with this. Yeah, I, I thought it was great. And the, oh, and to see her, so I got to see behind the scenes to see her perform in it. Like, her, she, it, the look was as strong as her performance. Um, you know, because she kind of gets to come out and then uh, when she starts doing her cheers, you, like, when she, she has her pom-poms in a way where you don't see the heads, and then yeah. when she puts them up, yeah. it was the gag. Like, you heard everyone gasp. It was, and like, what a cool concept, too, to like have these like uh, uh, headed, beheaded 
faces, you know, as the pom poms. Like, yeah, I, I loved everything about it. It was a, a five amps out of camp for me. And the the costume just so distressed and ugly and gore and just everything. Also, a, a detail that I noticed was that she had dyed the tips of the tinsel in like a, a bloody color. How the oh. fuck do you dye tinsel? I don't know. No? I don't know. It's I really don't know how you do that. Louis That's impressive. Talent. <laughs> she has certainly broken the Denver curse. And and also like just like the dirt clumps on her shoe that were mm -hmm. like actually plasticized dirt like. It's the details with Lulu. Lulu always brings details. Um, and it was a great campfire. W-H-D, who da ho. <laughs> Literally, she had the letters right. of who da ho. It, um, the details were there. The distressing was there. The concept. Yeah. It's, it, this is. And now we actually have the story of the campfire ghost that is the camp spirit badge of that exactly. little ghost with the pom-poms. So this is a five amps out of five because, you know, when you first look at it, you're like, huh. But when you start to think about all the details and all the thought that's got into it and the campfire story itself, it's just really, really, really well done. Excellent. Yeah. I, I mean, I wish I wasn't a leech. I wish I was a cheerleader back on season four. <laughs> Do you give this five out of eight, five as well? Oh, yeah, this is this is five out of five for me. Five out of five, Lulu. Um, next, we have Patty Bray as this deathly figure that reveals into a uh, ranger, the poorly named Ranger Bubblebutt. <laughs> <laughs> I freaking howled at this. Number one, Patty Bray finally changing up her makeup significantly. I knew so, you'd be happy about that one, especially those eyebrows. Congratulations. You've never looked better. <laughs> No, this is so fucking funny. And it's such a good commentary and a really good campfire story. Yeah. I mean, because it's, I, I recently turned 28. I'm looking down the barrel of 29. So oh. hearing her talk about 24 to 26 be the age wow. of twink death, it kind of sent wow. me on a little bit of I a... I don't relate. I've always been 17. <laughs> oh yeah. The middle-aged woman trapped in a preteen girl's body. Or do I have that reversed? Oh, I'm an old woman trapped in an old woman, older woman's body. <laughs> wow, the whole season's been that bad, huh? Yeah, I, I just love this so much. This is a total five amps of fun for me. It was so freaking funny. The costuming was so good. This is one I really debate on. Uh, yeah. And I, I think for me, it's gonna be a three amps out of camp. Okay, okay. Um, it was, to me, it wasn't just, like, I, I'm thinking about it across this top five talent show. Yes. Um, and for me, it just, just did not place as high as some of the others. Um, but I, I don't know. It, there were a lot of great details. And again, they performed the shit out of it, which I appreciated. So yeah. good job. The three amps out of camp for me. Interesting. Interesting rating. Woo. <laughs> um, so now we have Stevie Phoenix as the Statue of Liberty who is a, a baby. Um, the message is very high camp. Yeah. Very, very risque, very poignant, uh, very newsworthy, very all the kind of things. And very interestingly done. Like, you know, you don't see it at first, and then they raise the dress and it's all <laughs> rich and kind of in pure blood, which is like gross, but like visceral and just like, Ooh! And, she, uh, you know, Stevie giving us fam drag is kind of a gag, too. Yeah, yeah, that sounds so like... like this is a real, like, whoa! Right. I... Yeah, again, this is when I kind of go back and forth on, because it was very powerful. Like, I, yeah. the room was dead silent at, at my viewing party, um, and I could tell people were really experiencing this emotion with him. Um, like, especially, like, the and what, what got me on this look was I loved the campiness of those details. He had the tombstone, you know, that is normally, like, the tablet in the Statue of Liberty's yeah. hand that said the death of Roe versus Wade. Yeah. Um, also, the coat hanger crown... Like, the coat hanger crown. What? The it, irony. The irony of <laughs> Betty Sugar Baker saying to Stevie, like, I bet your kids are going to be proud of you. <laughs> oh. 
while she's wear while she's wearing that coat hanger crap. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like it just like made me die inside. <laughs> Okay, uh, so there was a, a moment um, that has become a soundboard button on flapping and fawning our podcast. Uh, All the way in episode one, Betty said to one of the campers, uh, your story was a little weird. And <laughs> ever ever since then, like, that, that I felt that a story was weird. I say that exactly. <laughs> and your story was a little weird. So for Betty, um, though, that story was a little weird. This one is hard to judge because it's a mm-hmm. lot of things. I don't know if it's entirely on theme with spooky stories which i think is probably the biggest problem that they were identifying but i still have to give it a four because freaking stevie goes way out of their box to do this femme drag thing something we completely have not seen from them really cool concept and i'd like to applaud that so four arms of camp for me Yes. I I will say I felt like there were some structural things with the dress that could have been approved on for the costuming for me um so I, I, yeah, I think it's also going to be a four for me though, because she really took it there with those details. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm not a judge, so I'll just give it four amps out of camp. Exactly. <laughs> Up next, we've got Nutella Fitzgerald as lunch lady, Phyllis cheese steak. Ah, and this is, oh my God, probably one of the most Ooh. like Dragula-esque, <laughs> disgusting thing like more disgusting than multiple riley poppy seeds and unique new york's eating poop oh my god on on stage um or miss texas like sniffing poop in her bum like this was like i i couldn't i couldn't contain myself they kept going back to that shot of her like the gunk like come out of her mouth like (laughs) but i will say i did not like that moment had a reaction for me, but I really was not living for a lot of the rest of this concept, to be honest. Yes, let's talk about the outfit. Did you the, live for the outfit? No, I, no. I didn't. Yeah. Um, I, I, well, Nutella is such an outstanding performer. Um, and I feel like she really sold it on that pers- uh, from that front. But there were just a lot of details that weren't quite there for me. Like we had the yellow and brown staining all over the dress. Yeah. And so I thought we were going to go to like a camp on a pee pee poo poo place uh, initially. Yeah. And so I was kind of thankful we didn't do that. But then it kind of confused me like, wait, is the cheesesteak poop? Like what's happening? And then when she pulled up and revealed the meat in her panty, I just didn't think it was enough. Um, So, to be honest, this was a a three amps out of camp for me. Yeah, you know, it it was, it was fine. uh, But, like, really the gag was the the gimmick itself. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it four. Good for, good for you, Nutella. Like, oh, that's so gross. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And then finally, we have, I, I think this was underrated as a look. Hanna Barbera as Puppy from Puppy Land. Um, very clearly, perhaps based on popular video game series Five Nights at Freddy's, very much had that aesthetic. Um, but I don't think Five Nights at Freddy's dominates the market on creepy animatronics. Like I agree. The has done it. Disney has done it. Every so many countries have done it. So it's like. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I do think it, it definitely bears a resemblance to the character. Freddy. To, yes. to Freddy, yes. Because uh, I don't I don't even know the name of the character, but I was like, oh, I see. I know that's that, like, the look from Five Nights yeah. at Freddy's. Um, but to me, what made this stand out was uh, when she would, like, have that gag of the animatronic lifting up its head and eating the person that's inside. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a cool way to like deliver this concept and mix the Hanna Barbera world with this camp spirit world. Exactly. Uh, also, and I also thought the garment itself was very, very well done. Excellent. And you know, I, I believe she made those additional bone props on site at camp, but I really appreciated the bone Joe. I really appreciated the bone that was added to the hook. Um, I kind, of, I kind of come from a different school of thought than what, like, the history of the show has been. I know that we don't, we typically value, like, the... Cosplay. Yeah, no, no cosplay. cosplay. 
We want this <laughs> to be like an original character. Yeah. And, and I get that to some extent, but in my opinion, drag plays on two things and that is gender and it's a referential art form. So I right. think it's okay to reference things like that, especially when you can have this really clear tie into Hanna-Barbera's world like we got. Yeah. It was five yeah. amps out of camp for me. I also give this five amps out of camp. Um, cosplay be damned. When I saw it on the stage, I was just like, this is incredible. Yeah. This if, is, you know. This yeah. is this and, and Lulu were the ones that I, I personally thought were gonna be in the top two. Uh, I was worried. I was worried about the Five Nights at Freddy's cosplay and I was like, yeah. uh-oh. Because that's the thing on Camp One Kiki, don't leave yourself open to cosplay criticism. So mm -hmm. one word of advice is that um, even though we give this five and we think it's freaking phenomenal, don't do it. Yeah, we're not the judges. <laughs> the, the judges yeah. don't like it. I'm not wearing a beehive. She's not wearing a whatever Jerry wears. So <laughs> it's not cult one. It's not cult one of Kiki giving you your marks at the You're end of the day. You're just losers of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so we got Patty and Lulu in the top two. Yes. I think a reasonable top two, absolutely. Um, and Lulu Crystals takes the win. Do you agree? I do. I do. I really thought this was well-deserved. Um, all, all the details were, were perfect for me. And knowing that this is such an original Camp Wanakiki story, it really does put it at the top yeah. of all five looks for me today. I think that's the number one thing. Always appeal to the judges' sensibilities and stories and what they're trying to create. And you'll you'll go far. I was um, surprised no one asked how her head was. <laughs> how is her head? Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't had yeah. any complaints from her. No I, idea. No I idea where I am. introduced Yelp reviews. It, it's <laughs> a little positive experience for Lulu. Oh, so we should talk about now the standings. Because now we have Hannah with... One win and a loss, uh, and a comeback essentially. But we've got Nutella with two talent show wins, zero bottoms, Lulu with two talent show wins, zero bottoms, Patty with two talent show wins, and one bottom. So, like, it's it's a tight race. We've literally got a three way tie plus Hannah with one who might be the dark horse, um, in this competition because they just they're just killing it. I I, yeah, it, it is a very tight race, and I, um, I don't know. I'm I'm curious as to where this is gonna go because I really can't quite predict it based on this top five or you know this top no. four. Now that we know from this episode, um, but for me, to be totally honest, Hannah Barbera is my winner this season. I would love to see Hannah take home that crown uh, and to be our next camp champ. I just think it's. It's rare to find someone who kind of invents a style of drag. And I mm. and maybe that's the wrong term for it. I don't know anyone else who does drag like Hannah Barbera does, but she's who I'm rooting for to take it all. Hannah's doing great. I think she's gonna do great. Uh, I definitely think Patty and Nutella still are my top two picks at this moment. Mm. I think it's really between them. But Lulu and her details are is really starting to come in there. But has okay, but has Lulu ever been in the bottom? No. No, and she's got two wins. And neither and, has Nutella. Neither has Nutella. Right. So, but also, she's a Hamburger Mary's girl. So I kind of wonder if Lulu's going to take the whole thing. Cheater. It, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cheater. Okay, let, let's let's move on to the sadder part where we've got Hannah and Stevie in the bottom. Yes. Hannah uh, does triumph and Stevie is sent home. Uh, which is so sad to see. I mean, number one, we're losing our king, which yes. sucks because yet again, um, kings just can't get by, as our our, our, <laughs> our darling Vincent brother has said once. Um, but it's so sad to see Stevie go. Stevie is so, so, so nice. So talented. I really enjoyed him this season. And oh. also, I this is one of those ones where I wish that we had, that the improv challenge had been played a little bit more into the critiques because he, I don't know about you, but I was laughing almost the most from him. Yeah, um, he did. I really believe I was laughing the most at what he did. Uh, and I think having to do an improv scene with a character like Bebop, and that was where he spent the most of his time and he still got that many laughs. I think that's... Yeah really impressive feat. Yeah. Uh, so I, 
I don't know. I don't know who I would have sent taking a hike, but I'm not sure that I would have sent Stevie this episode. Honestly, it's impossible to say who should take a hike. Like, yeah. no one ever deserves to take a hike. You know what I mean? Like, hey. everyone... But, okay, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> everyone is so lovable, so gorgeous we i mean drag is so in my opinion hard to quantify especially camp yeah. drag how do you even choose it's so up in the air anyone can win give give everyone their flowers and just try and make this your moment everybody make this your moment this is your moment you know it's very true i mean the thing the thing is and obviously this is not the phrase from our show but the real race starts after you're on the show. Camp um, Waikiki. After you're on Camp Waikiki, <laughs> right? What an amazing phrase. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. Like, you can take this opportunity, this 15 minutes of fame that you have had and turn it into something that is really worth your time and really worth yeah. that investment that you um, that you made to just be on this show. Uh, or you could be upset that you took a hike and then want to distance yourself from the show. And I don't, don't do that. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Put on a t-shirt and move on. Be a part of this family and, and, and you'd be grateful for it. Um, if you want to follow Flapjack, they've got their podcast flapping and fawning. You can check them out on Instagram. They're on some corner in Birmingham, Alabama and every night of the week. So I certainly am. And I do community <laughs> service at the glory hole. But, <laughs> Before I go, uh, yeah. quick question: When yeah. will this episode come out? Do you? Know? I don't. Um, Tuesday, something like that. Yeah. Okay. I am. I do want to plug. I'm doing a viewing party at Owls on Seventh, and for our final two episodes, I will have campers from the season. So for um, the semifinal, I'll have Patty Bure, and then for the finale episode, we're gonna have a secret special guest that I will announce on the day of the airing of the semifinal. Um, <laughs> so. At that viewing party, we have a really great time. So come see us at that. Or also you can watch my Instagram because at the end of every viewing party, I try to go viral with a campy drag show. Yeah. Uh, and so far I have been successful one and a half times. So I think I get one and a half amps out of my camp for this season. Based five on amps, that. five amps flap. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. One of them, I did a number about Trump's ear getting blown off. Um, and that was that was a, a a party. So I'm I'm loving the views from that one. Uh, but I bet it was a, a Republican party coming after you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Flapjack. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, I just think the world of you, and ugh, it's just so nice to have you in my life. So thank you. Thanks, Hillary. I love you as well. Thank you for doing this show because I. I have done review shows for Camp Wanakiki. We're not doing it this season of Flapping and Fawning, yeah. but we are having the folks who come to Birmingham be on the podcast if they want to be. Um, so if you want to listen to to those episodes, you can. Um, but also make sure y'all send Hillary some love. I know she has a tip bucket going. Obviously, yeah. she really needs some money. So send it over her <laughs> way. <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm just hanging in there. I mean. Uh, please do support if you can. The tip tip link is there or buy a t-shirt or whatever you like. Also, um, Squirrel Talk. We're going to have Stevie Phoenix on Squirrel Talk this week to talk shit about the show now that they have taken a hike in our hiker series. So go to sonarpodcast.com uh, to listen to Squirrel Talk uh, and Stevie's exit interview. Other than that, we'll see you next time, squirrels. This episode is long enough, so I got to get editing. Bye. Bye. <laughs> when I say wanna, you say kill me. Wanna. Kill me. <laughs> Do you wanna kiki? Do you wanna kiki? Cult wanna kiki. Cult wanna kiki. Cult wanna kiki. One, two, three. Cult wanna kiki. Cult wanna kiki. Cult. Okay, that's enough. Yeah.